What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today is the first time I want to try out a new kind of feature that is going to add some interactivity to the channel for you guys out there who watch my videos. So I came up with this idea of um, basically people sending me questions and then I'll answer them but they have to send the question via Instagram Messenger as a video message. So get your phone out film yourself asking me a question and then I'll feature your video on the channel and then I'll do my best to answer the question. Now it doesn't have to be just about bikes or it doesn't have to be about what's life in Japan like or anything like that. It can be as wild and as funny or as stupid as you want and I will answer the question whatever it is. So get creative out there guys. So yeah if anyone wants to do that then literally all you have to do is just um, send me a private message on um, Instagram with your video attached. I think it has to be up to um, a maximum of a minute in length for Instagram I can't remember so yeah try and make it short and sweet and yeah that'll be a, a new feature that I'll be doing on the channel from now on so the first question we've got is from Chewy in Australia and he asks me this yeah g'day TJ it's Chewy here just got a quick question for you now I know you've owned a lot of different motorcycles ranging from KTM's and Suzuki's and uh, even a Daytona for a little while. What's been your favorite bike and why? All right, Chewie, thank you very much for your question. So yeah, you are right, mate. I have um, gone through quite a few bikes over the years. So uh, even since I started this channel, I think I've gone through six bikes and that's just in three years. So I have got quite a bit of experience with riding different types of bikes, different manufacturers and different styles from like uh, cruisers to sports bikes to nakeds and supermotos. So I've kind of yeah, I've had one of each, especially over the years. So I've been riding since 1995 or something like that. So quite a long time. Um, and yeah, so having all those bikes over the years, trying to pick a favorite, you would think would be quite a hard choice. Um, but it's not, but <laughs> I'm not going to give you the answer straight away because that make a very short video. But um, so yeah, let's talk about some of the bikes I've owned then. So to start with, my very first bike was a VFR 400. Um, I then went to a GSX-R 600 SRAD, then went to a Ducati 748 SP. And yeah, after that I had a bit of a pause from bikes for a while. Um, but the, the next bike I got after that was a um, GSX-R 750 Street Fire. That was when I lived in Australia. Um, first bike in Japan was like a little shitty 250. I can't remember what it was even called. Um, then the first big bike that I got over here was an SZR 1000, which I crashed and broke my leg, smashed my leg into smithereens on that bike. Again, I had a bit of a break from bikes then because uh, the pain was real. Um, but yeah, after that I went to, uh, let's see, I think my next bike after that was a 690 Duke, KTM Duke 690. Um, after that I went to uh, 690 SMC, the Supermoto one, then MT-07, then CBR 600 RR, uh, then I guess my KTM 990 Super Duke, then the SV650, then the Triumph Daytona, and now this old girl, the GSX-R 1000 K2. So out of all those bikes, um, let's say on top of that, I've probably ridden maybe 20 different bikes of my friends. Um, like a, the 1500 Vulcan is the first one that I borrowed off one of my friends to do a, a review video on. So yeah, and also hire bikes and stuff when I've been, you know gone on holiday in Thailand and stuff like that. I was always hiring different kind of bikes. So yeah, I've got quite a, um, a varied, a varied, um, what do you call it? Uh, basically, I'm just trying to say I've got a lot of experience on lots of different bikes. So when it comes to fun, um, for me, it's not all about, you know, the power and the speed and stuff like that. Um, that's probably the reason I got an MT-07, even though at, at the time I bought that brand new, so I could have easily afforded a, um, an R1 or a Jix 1000 or something. I just didn't feel the need to have, you know, like 150, 160 or even 200 horsepower these days. I didn't feel that it was necessary just to have fun. And uh, to be honest, the KTM's proved that to me, the 690s. 
you know it's a single cylinder engine with like I think about 60 horsepower god that bike was so much fun the supermoto like I went places on that that you would never be able to go on um, another bike you know like even though it had street tires on I was still going off road and going into the woods and going up lanes and stuff it was so much fun so yeah for me the important thing is the fun factor rather than you know the the shit that you can brag about at the pub with your mates oh my bike's got 210 horsepower well my bike's got 220 horsepower I, I really don't give a shit about that for me it's all about the riding experience and the fun so if we're going to talk about riding experience and fun um I'm going to have to say my favourite ever bike that I've ever owned in 20 odd years of riding is my 990 Super Duke. Um, now you might think that's a funny answer because I sold that bike because I was pissed off with it because it was always braking and yeah that's true it was not the most reliable bike that I've ever owned. Um, it was constantly blowing gaskets and generating new oil leaks like wetting the bed every time it could and eventually that got me down and I was just like nah fuck this get rid of the bike and buy a Japanese bike which is what I did but when that thing worked and to be honest it wasn't like it was never broken down it was always just silly little little leaks um, that, that it that it um, sprung every now and then it wasn't anything that would stop it from riding as long as you don't mind a little bit of oil spill um, but yeah basically when that thing was in tip-top condition and it was working oh my god it was so much fun um, I'm not 100% sure what the the specs are but it's basically a thousand cc V twin I think it's got like 120 horsepower I might be wrong on that but yeah I, I had stock exhaust on it as well because um, it sounded pretty good as a as a stock bike anyway but also over here it seems like when you've got loud pipes on a v-twin you tend to get um called up on the track on the track days because they're they're quite strict with the noise limits here so a um my mate's panigale v2 was always getting he was always getting told off for it being too noisy so i decided like, yeah just stick with it being 100 percent stock um so I do a little, I tweak the suspension on it, you know, like you should always do that on a bike, but I set the sag and the preload and, you know, I put a cable tie around the fork legs so I could measure it, um, measure it as well as, you know, as well as doing it with a ruler and properly doing it with two or three people to help you. I also had a cable tie around it and I would adjust the suspension to whatever road I was on to suit the conditions and it just handled so freaking well. I mean, I did crash it, uh in august 2020 and fucked up my shoulder um and that was because it was quite a talky engine very talky so when you got your knee down on the deck you got to be pretty careful with the throttle and i guess i wasn't so it spat me off and uh yeah that was a rather painful experience but in actual fact it hardly broke a thing on the bike it was literally just replace the levers and stuff like that and it was good to go and in fact my friend adam drove it back from the crash site the very next day for me even in in its you know as it was as a crash bike and it, it was fine um but yeah the fun factor man that thing it was just awesome i changed the gearing on it so it would really like fuck but even when you weren't you know trying to hoon around it was just the the torque of the engine was just so good it would just pull you along pleasantly at low rpms and then as soon as you touch the throttle it's just like bam it's like all hell breaks loose so yeah for me the fun factor that bike is 100 percent the best bike that i've ever owned um but yeah like i said it wasn't reliable and it did start to get me down in the end um and maybe i'm gonna drop in a second bike here because this might surprise you as well my second favorite bike would be my sv650 now i bought that as a number two bike because the ktm was always breaking and i wanted something reliable and japanese and yeah underpowered thing only a little 600 uh what is it 650 um uh v-twin not that much power but absolutely awesome fun because as one of the things i think that people tend to tend to like overlook when buying a fast bike is you can't use all the power on the road like even this you know it's what 150 or 160 horsepower or something you can't fully open the throttle everywhere you go you have to you have to be kind of um you know you have to be knocking back the throttle like an extra uh, like 10 percent less than you want to you can't really go full throttle on it 
and with a smaller bike like um like a 650 or a 400 man you can just go full throttle everywhere and you can enjoy the experience better because you're using the entire potential of the engine whereas on this like what what can i use on the road with, on a thousand cc bike like maybe 50 percent of his actual potential you know like unless you're on the isle of man tt course or something it's like it's just it's kind of dumb in my opinion but obviously i bought one so i can't say it's dumb but uh yeah for me the the smaller bikes that allow you to use the full the full potential of them is where the fun's at and right last last little side note the most fun bike that i actually borrowed uh last year was my mate chris's husqvarna uh vit pillen 401 that you know that's again it's a 400 cc uh single cylinder engine oh my god it was so much fun i would say hands down more fun than this bike is on the japanese twisty roads um on the little the little narrow twisty ones god that thing was so much fun so yeah i'm gonna say yeah so number one my 990 super duke was the most fun bike i've ever had the most fun and also the most reliable second in second place would be the sv650 and just a bike that i've ridden and totally totally loved and didn't want to give back to my mate was the uh vip pillin 401 so yeah that's um that's my my take on uh, all the bikes that i've owned and ridden over the years so thank you very much for the question chewy so who's next who's got a question for me let's go wild this time let's not do let's not do bikes or japan let's do some something stupid so yeah over to you guys all right i'm gonna go and get myself a coffee from that lawson over there and i'll see you guys in the next video ciao